Καλησπέρα σας. Απόψε θα μιλήσουμε σχετικά για τη συμμετοχή της συλλογικής αγωγής στην ΙΠΑ μαζί με τον κύριο Αθανάσιο Τσιμπίδη που είναι πάλι μαζί μας εδώ στο Λονδίνο. Εάν θυμάστε αρχές Δεκεμβρίου ο κύριος Τσιμπίδης ήταν μαζί μας εδώ στο Λονδίνο και είχε κάνει σεμινάρια σχετικά με τη συλλογική αγωγή απέναντι της Τουρκίας Τη Τράπεζα HSBC και τη Τουρκική Δημοκρατία Βόρειο Κύπρου, λεγόμενη σαν επιχείρηση. Μέσα στην πίδη. Good evening. Good Thank evening. you for coming again to London. It's Thank been uh, an honor again. Uh, we had a fabulous uh, seminar last December, whereby it was an enormous success. And uh, our organization, Lobby for Cyprus, welcomes you here in London. I can't thank the Lobby for Cyprus enough for advocating the rights of Greek Cypriots and allowing me the opportunity to discuss how those rights can be protected in the United States. Uh, if you remember in December, we uh, uh, had uh, interesting seminars and debates with a lot of the people in our community here. And a lot of questions were raised regarding uh, the action which you are taking against uh, the pseudo-state inverted commas, called a commercial enterprise, and also Turkey and HSBC Bank. Um, since then, there have been tremendous developments. And I would like you just to tell me your recent visit to Cyprus in the last four or five days. Has that helped to reinforce the class action? And tell us a little about the, the support that you had and the events that you had to make this uh, an even greater success. Yes, we received overwhelming support from the good people of Cyprus. They were thirsty on how to advocate their rights. They've been placed in fear and being provided no alternatives. At least that is what the media in Cyprus and unfortunately the government has been presenting to them. But once they realized that not only can they advocate their rights, they can win in the United States. There's been an overwhelming support and we've received tremendous applications and many more are coming in every day. We have reached a very symbolic number. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, that's great. Could you please just um, tell me how many events did you have and uh, what parts of Cyprus did you have? Who was involved as well? and um, uh, any particular officials, government officials were present, uh, media and so forth? Yes, we had five events, three of them in Nicosia, uh, one in Paralimni and one in Lemaso, which was um, uh, quite shocking and surprising of the turnout. Mm -hmm. In excess of 300, close to probably 400 individuals participated in the event and many couldn't fit in and left because of the a lack of, of size and accommodation. It was standing room only. And that was very impressive from an attorney's perspective, but also knowing that the good people of Cyprus really want to know, they want to get information on how to protect their rights. Mm -hmm. And they're getting that. Costas Mavridis, a professor of the University of Cyprus, uh, has assisted in um, providing some of these forums. I have my representative, Yana Constadino, who is a big advocate of the case. Her parents are involved in the case, and I'm very fortunate to have her. And she has been my right arm and right hand in Cyprus. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. um, which associations were involved in these events? Uh, Adula Ticarinha uh, sponsored one of the events. We had, uh, and I apologize, some of my, uh, uh, the Greek is not, not as good. Worry. No, but no, no, no. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, we had an event in the Kikos uh, venue yes. that mm -hmm. was on behalf of uh, refugee association, mothers of refugees. Right. Uh, we also had the event in Archiepiscopi, mm -hmm. and uh, there was an event from Ayos Avrosios, who we shall not forget, mm -hmm. who turned out in droves. Um, that meant a lot to me personally, and I mm -hmm. think to many who were there. But uh, the good people of Cyprus know what we stand for. Yana, myself, Theodora Christou, who is working with me through our firm, uh, have all been advocating the case. And we are, again, approaching a very symbolic number, have met that symbolic number. 
That, that, that's great. Um, now, having come from Cyprus uh, uh, to England, uh, last night we, we, as Lobby for Cyprus, assisted you in organizing a seminar, um, or an update rather than a seminar, mm -hmm. uh, to the community at the Brotherhood. And uh, again, it was a resounding success. We, it was a full house. Um, there were some important messages that came out from last night that you had to portray, something, some new messages. And I think one of them was bringing Turkey into the equation. Tell us a little bit about why Turkey wasn't in, and now it's part of the class action. Yes. Initially, Turkey was included in the lawsuit, but because they refused to accept service and because of a tactic in that the weakness in the case that I saw was to establish jurisdiction as much as possible and there's several ways of doing so. One of them we know is the use of arms. That is by Turkey. In order to sue a, a foreign nation, a recognized nation, you need an exception to immunity and under the Kirkham case, which I was for, fortunate enough to win and establish law in the country, uh, in, uh, in exercising jurisdiction over a foreign nation, that applies in this case against the Republic of Turkey. Mm -hmm. But then I realized the Achilles heel of this whole case, and that is the pseudo-state, not as a recognized government, because it is not. Even the pseudo-state agrees to it, admits that, as some of the evidence I showed during the seminar. But most importantly, there is no immunity. And as we expose the illegal commercial enterprise in the United States, it would also act as a separate basis and waiver against the Republic of Turkey. Right. Mm -hmm. And we showed that evidence last mm -hmm. night, as mm -hmm. you saw, for mm -hmm. the very first time in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And people were shocked to see the entanglement, the involvement of the Republic of Turkey. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what I want to do now, I think was very important, is um, uh, commercial enterprise, say, in, in in the UK, we call, we call it a business. Correct. It's a business unit, just like Hellenic TV is a business. Correct. Yeah. So in, in Washington, D.C., there is a business called the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. That is correct. And that has people who work for it. Correct. But they want it to look as, as if it's a, a diplomatic uh, st state and organization, but not a business. Is that, is that what they want to portray? That, that is correct. So they're not only violating Greek Cypriot rights, but they're also being false and deceptive towards the American public, which is a huge concern. Mm -hmm. And one of the documents that I showed last night, the Certificate of Occupancy. Well, I want to show that. I, w I just want to show that. This is the Certificate of Occupancy. It's in English and in Greek. And it just shows clearly, who is this gentleman? Uh, uh, that's Hilmi Akil, that's the so-called ambassador of the pseudo-state in the United States. He comes not under a diplomat's visa, mm -hmm. but a B-1 visa, a business visa, and is a known lobbyist and a registered lobbyist in the United States. That is a business activity. Right, right, right. And, bo and, and below, I mean, the certificate of occupancy, which is probably in, in England, we call it uh, a business certificate. Correct. Yes, a trading right. certificate. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. Yes, Mr. Osman Ertug, who is the current spokesman for the pseudo-state, but was the ambas so-called ambassador in the United States back in the early 2000, uh, 2003, I believe, or two th yes, 2003. Yes. Not my statements, but their own statements state what the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is a trade name. That's what you see. That's right. Here. It says trading name as Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. So it's not really a, a, a has diplomatic immunity or is recognized as, as a state. Yeah. Tell me, uh, last night, if I remember correctly, who is only allowed to recognize a state in the United States? The president of the United States can only determine a, and recognize a state. So do you think the president will recognize this as a state? No. No, it would not. <laughs> well, I think that's, that's very clear, isn't it? And I also want to just mention mm -hmm. the certificate of occupancy acts as prima facie evidence of jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. This establishes the ability of the court to hail the, the commercial enterprise and adjudge it before the courts in the United States by itself. So if this is a business, yeah. then who is, where are they getting their money from? Well, the money, that's a very good question. Uh, money comes in and out of the illegal occupied territories. The commercial enterprise feeds through the blood money of Greek Cypriots by 
and through the assistance of HSBC Bank. Good, because you know, good, because I want to show this document because I think this is very, very important. I and I, I think here you will see that Halifax, we all know Halifax, which is, this is from Glasgow, is one of our banks. And it shows how money is transferred from Halifax through, to, through HSBC, which is the clearing bank, through to Guernsey. Nicosia, tell us a little bit about how this works. Yes. In order for monies to go to and from the legally occupied territories, you need a clearinghouse. You need a bank capable of transferring money from one foreign nation to another. Mm -hmm. And they're highly regulated. Yes. So you need the assistance of a state in order to conceal this illegal money, blood money trail. So you have the money coming from Halifax and other foreign banks. Mm -hmm to the HSBC system. And where it's, is that? Which country is that? Uh, it's HSBC? into Turkey, in Constantinople. The money is transferred to Constantinople, and from Constantinople it is transferred to the illegal occupied territories through HSBC Bank. Right. And HSBC in Turkey obviously requires and is under the control of the Republic of Turkey. So they're both involved directly and indirectly by controlling HSBC Bank and are involved in the very transactions. So, in, in English terms, is this a fraudulent transaction? Well, I mean, what terminology would we use? It's or, not only or is it money laundering? What, what is it? It is it money laundering and it is fraudulent. Mm -hmm. It's illegal. Mm -hmm. Only a foreign state can issue title to property. The pseudo state is not a recognized state. Right. And by definition, mm -hmm. every title that they have issued is fraudulent and illegal and void. That what you showed states that is for a purchase of property. Well, I mean, that's, I think, quite clear to show the transaction. We haven't seen these documents before. It's the first time that they've come to light uh, uh, here in London. Um, very important. Now, um, a lot of the viewers tonight will want to know, well, OK, um, how do I apply? What is the process of application? Okay. The process is actually very simple. All we need right now is information regarding your property and that is the towns, the locations of the property that are illegally interfered with. That, in a very simple way, we don't need the deeds, just simple information. Under US laws and requirements by rules, the complaint only needs f a sufficient facts to alert, to put on notice the defendant of the claims. Excellent, and um, the, the form, can it be filled in, because last night when we had a lot of um, questions, it was regarding the young generation whose parents had property. Some parents had passed away, or family or grandparents, mm -hmm. and they, the kids, did not have title to that property. They did not own it. How, would, how could they actually help in the whole process of applying and joining the class action? Even if you do not have property in your name, but you have what we call in the United States equitable title. And under Cypriot law, if you, if you not transfer the property and your parents or grandparents have deceased, but intended on, and it passes through the children, it is automatic, even though they not transferred it technically. Yes. That's what we call equitable title. It gives you rights mm -hmm. to actually participate in the lawsuit. In addition, we actually ask that those who are interested rather open an estate. That's the other alternative and the preferred alternative. Yes. But you can involve yourself in either opening up an estate, which protects the interest of the, those who have deceased or who owned the property prior to the transfer. Right. And you could also do that through a power of attorney. In yes. case they're still alive, it's just a simple transfer of their parents. You could have a power of attorney to advocate their rights during the period of time they owned that property. I, th I think, again, uh, some of the questions that came up last night is, well, my grandparents are in, in Cyprus, or I've got family in Cyprus, they want to transfer these deeds onto our names. Can your associate firm in, in Cyprus help the whole process? Can uh, the Constantino firm help? Yana Constantino is exactly there for that purpose, to assist in the litigation process. She's very experienced. She has the power attorneys ready and is capable of opening up the estates necessary to involve those interests into the case. So. Um, could she, uh, can she, or does she have the right to take applications? Yes, she does. Right. She's authorized mm -hmm. to do that and has done it and is continuing. She, when she returns on March 
7th or 8th, she is setting up meetings in different parts of Cyprus and to continue the momentum that has built up. That's good. And yeah. also, assuming, Mr. Tsimpidis, you'll be going to Washington in a couple of days' time. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact, uh, you'll be going to uh, Washington, D.C. Who will be representing you here in London? Who can they contact in your absence? Theodora Christou, who works through my firm, is here in London and is capable of assisting anyone in London and providing them information to participate in the lawsuit. Good. Yeah. Now, um, obviously, uh, the viewers will ask, well, how much does this, does this cost? Because they know when they go to a lawyer in England, well, the minute they open the door, it's hundreds and thousands of pounds that, uh, that uh, lawyers want to get paid. Tell me how much the cost is going to be. The cost in this case, we, uh, for the UK plaintiffs, it is 200 pounds if you have one to three deeds, no matter how many individuals are within those deeds, it is by deed. So you have it's either 200 pounds for one to three deeds, and it is 400 pounds for four or more deeds, no matter how many. In addition, the Simpetis law firm receives 7% of all monies or judgments actually received. Right, okay. So I repeat that is 200 pounds for the first three title deeds and 400 pounds for uh, uh, for thereafter. And that, is that the only cost they will incur until you actually um, get judgment against uh, Turkey or anyone and you receive funds in order to meet that 7% yeah. that you will receive and the 93% will go to the claimant? Yes. Is that correct? The only out-of-pocket monies are the initial monies into the case. The Simpetis law firm will pay for the evaluators. All other costs will be paid through the Simpetis law firm. I, I think, well, I think that's uh, excellent and a very low cost, very low risk for anyone who wishes to. I but one thing I'd like to ask, because a lot of um, other lawyers in Cyprus have taken similar, well, have taken cases to the, the uh, European Court of Human Rights, to the ECJ, and we've had worries over the years, the last 10 years, from the Titina Loisiu, the case to date, uh, to the Bostolidis case, where the biggest fear was loss of title. Now, is there any chance with this case that you're going to take to the courts in the US for any person that applies to lose the right of their title to the property? No. Titles remain with the claimant, with the plaintiffs. This case is solely with the interference of property rights. It has nothing to do with the title of the property. All right. Tell me a little bit about that and what, does, it, does it have to be just a property? Could it be anything else? So the viewers can understand that it's not just, ah, I've got a piece of land or a building or I've got a hotel which I've left behind. What else can somebody come and join the claim for? Okay. Other than, and I'll go through a little bit of compensation, in the U.S. case, unlike the European court system, specifically the ECHR, you have punitive damages, you have unjust enrichment, and where it doesn't allow the criminal actor to benefit mm -hmm. any unjust gain, all the profits that are derived by the criminal activity, the trespassers, go to the claimant. Otherwise, you, you would be providing benefits to the criminal, criminal actors. And my understanding of the ECHR is that they'll basically give you value based on 1974. The United States court system seeks fairness and justice and does not allow the criminal actors to benefit that way and provides the claimant the entire benefits throughout the course of their deprivation of rights. Um, you mentioned also the, uh, that's for compensation. Other individuals that's are right, other involved, individuals, yes. other individuals are involved in, which are not properly related. Mm -hmm. We have Eleni Foka, we have others from the atrocities. What, the, what is Eleni Foka? Why is she joining the class action? Well, she believes in the case. She believes in getting justice in the United States, advocating her rights. Despite the distance, she will travel to the United States to tell her story of the brutality, the atrocities that occurred and are still occurring. But Eleni Foka has made a choice to come to the United States to tell her story against the Republic of Turkey and the atrocities that are that committed to the enclave. Mm -hmm. 
And for her specifically, it's her human rights deprivation. That's right. We know the as atrocities. An enclaved, as an enclaved person. Correct. That she was in the past. Yes. And there's mm -hmm. brutal uh, factual circumstances that we don't want to discuss. But people who have been injured, family members or those killed, family members can take action to tell their stories. Yes. Well, I, I think uh, people can relate to Eleni Fogar. Um, have there been any other uh, municipalities or any other uh, government uh, uh, bodies that have joined the claim? Because I think people will feel far more comfortable if it's not just individuals, yes. but it has been uh, accepted and uh, uh, the, uh, the class action and claim has have been put in by other yes. bodies. Yes, uh, we're fortunate enough uh, when we were most recent in Cyprus coming back, uh, the town of Livera has joined the lawsuit. We know that the districts of Kyrenia are, are um, following up as well. Um, there were, the municipality of Caravas has joined the lawsuit. We are slowly building momentum and having come back from Cyprus, the phone calls and the emails have been relentless. Well, I think that's very important for the viewers to know that um, uh, not only individuals are participating. Um, Tell me now, after last night's event, what number of applications have we hit? We have reached the symbolic number, number that Greeks know, 300. We have reached a very symbolic number, both personally and I think in the scales of justice. Having the judge know that there are such significant numbers weighs heavily in the court's determinations. I think that's, that's very important because uh, uh, late November we were just hitting the 100 mark. Correct. And I think the momentum has come and, and your presence both here in the UK and also in Cyprus has played a very, very important role. Um, obviously, again, with the support and dedication of those in Cyprus and here in, in the UK. Um, interesting enough, what are your plans now? for the next few months, because um, at present, the outcome of the judgment, or, sorry, the jurisdiction, mm -hmm. I have to use the right terminology mm -hmm. in American terminology, the jurisdiction has not come out. And as the decision of the judge has not come out, um, tell us when you expect that, and also, um, can people still apply until that date? Yes, okay. People who are interested should not wait they should apply as soon as possible. I do not know exactly when the ruling will be. It could happen any day. It could happen with the next, in the next couple of months at the latest. The, um, and I believe uh, probably by May would be the latest. But I do expect a, a decision on jurisdiction to occur b between any day now and by May. The judge, in this case, Paul Friedman, the Honorable Paul Friedman, if, it, if this case did not have merit, would have dismissed the case already. The motion has been pending for eight months. This is an right. historic right. case. Mm -hmm. Judges write opinions, and this is one of them. He's writing an historic opinion that will determine the jurisdiction and bases to advocate the rights of Greek Cypriots and others who have been harmed by the barbaric invasion of 1974 and all of the illegal births of entities and uh, uh, including the pseudo-state and the like, that are being brought to justice and those who assisted, including HSBC. Right. Um, obviously, the viewers will want to know, where do I get an application form? How can I get an application? Are there, is it on your website? Yeah. I know on Lobby for Cyprus website, we have the application form on. Yeah. So uh, one can go into www.lobbyforcyprus.org and they can download it fill it in and then send it directly to you in the United States. Do you have it on your It's on, your on my website, website yes. Uh, and you could go to www.symbithislaw.com, although that has the U.S. application. I'm not sure if the U.K. one is on, and there's one for Cyprus as well. But it's on there. They could use anyone. I would recommend the people use the lobby's uh, website for now. They could also call, contact Theo, Theodora Christou, my representative, my, uh, here in, in the U.K., or they could contact Yana Constantino. I do want to also point out 
that once jurisdiction mm -hmm. is established in the United States, and as I mentioned, the certificate of occupancy alone establishes jurisdiction, but we have more than that, a lot more than that, which many people saw at the presentation. But once jurisdiction is established, I believe, based on my knowledge and experience, and knowing the other side, the defendants don't want simply to allow people to come in yes. and mm -hmm. continue to expose them to liability. They will do everything in their power to stop those coming in thereafter. And at that point, once jurisdiction is established, I cannot foresee the future. I can't tell you what I can or cannot do in adding individuals in. That's the importance of getting people now. The window is open. We've got to get as many in as now to weigh in our favor. But I think that's very important because, uh, as you explained very clearly last night, um, one does not know what will happen after the, rule, uh, the ruling comes out. And uh, last night, so many people uh, wanted to put forward their application and they'll be coming through to us as well directly to you to do so. Um, uh, we will also be putting the website and telephone numbers and contact details of Theodora Christou of the Tsimbiz Law Firm, of uh, the uh, Jan Nagostantinos Law Firm in Cyprus. It'll be on the actual uh, on the TV now and, and you'll be able to see that so if you want to contact anyone direct please do so. Um, you were recently in Canada and uh, I heard that uh, again there it was a, an enormous success. It was again a great turnout, uh, excellent questions. People are thirsty to know how to protect themselves and um, I was fortunate enough to meet Dinos Sofakleos, the president of SECA Canada, who invited me, and I gave a presentation in Toronto in late 2010, um, and we also covered a, uh, a segment on the local Hellenic TV news there as well. But the people are involved and have been and are included in the lawsuit from Canada, and we look for further participation from Canadians and a follow-up, I'm sure, in Toronto. Well, uh, Ethan, thank you so much for coming again. Um, uh, we know that uh, we're in safe hands and uh, the Cypriots are in safe hands with you and we look towards a positive outcome and we welcome you back to give us the good news that uh, the ruling will come out in our favour and then obviously you'll have hard work from there on. Thank you for coming and uh, let's uh, move it to a thousand I hope before the uh, ruling comes out. From your, gods to li uh, from your lips to God's ears and I do want to say one thing, everyone knows where I stand on this, and that is to win for the Greek Cypriot people. And I thank you for allowing me to present that. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for uh, spending a half an hour with us just to update us on the class action. We will be here again, and uh, next time we hope we'll have the best news ever. We will win the case and then move forward to claim what is rightfully ours. Thank you very much to all the viewers tonight. Good night.